Welcome to the Harper Classroom. Series of instructional videos. This video is on forecast accuracy with Excel. This video will consider three forecast accuracy measures. The mean deviation, mean absolute deviation, and tracking signal. In this video, I will first consider the definition, mechanics, and interpretation of the three measures, then how to calculate the three measures using Excel, and then how the three measures work together for applications. So let's consider this time series, a stationary time series with a random component, and let's use a moving average with a window of three as the forecasting technique. So 24 is our forecast, and forecast accuracy addresses the question, how accurate is that forecast, or how good is that forecast? And the approach is looking at the past forecast on how well they have forecasted the past data. So how well that's performed in the past, we'll use that information to address the question, how accurate is our forecast? Well, to do so, we take the deviations. We take the difference between our demand and our forecast, and the closer those deviations are to zero, then the closer our forecasts are to our demand. In addition to deviations, we also use the absolute value of the deviations. We could use all the data, but only the last few are used, which defines the window of the forecast accuracy measures. I selected four, which is different than the moving average window of three, because a moving average determines the forecast. The forecast accuracy measures determine the accuracy of those forecasts, two different operations. We will select the data from the last four time periods and copy it, and here's the data that's going to be used to determine our three forecast accuracy measures. So let's first consider our deviations. Let's sum the deviations and then take the mean. And that will be our mean deviation with a window of 4. And here's the equation where the sum of our deviations is a minus 5, n is 4, and so our mean deviation is a minus 1.25. Let's interpret this. Notice there's a minus sign. If I take the mean of our demand in our window, 24.5, and compare that with the mean of our forecast in the window, 25.75, notice our forecasts are greater than our, than our demand. So since our forecasts are greater than our demand, there's where the mean is negative. So when we have an average of our estimates greater than the observed values, that's referred to as bias. So the mean deviation is the absolute measure of the bias of our forecasts. So next, let's look at the absolute deviations. Again, we want to sum the deviations and take the mean, and this mean will be the mean of the absolute deviations with a window of 4, referred to as MAD. So here's our equation, where the sum of the absolute deviations is 13, n is 4, so the mean absolute deviation is 3.25. Let's interpret this. Well, when I look at the absolute value of the deviations, which is the minus signs removed, these absolute values simply indicate the magnitude of the difference between our demand data and our forecast. And so these absolute values indicate the variability of our forecasts around our demand. So the MAD is the absolute measure of the variability of our forecasts. Our third measure is a tracking signal, which is a ratio. It's a ratio where the numerator is the sum of the deviations minus 5. The denominator is the MAD, or the mean of the absolute deviation, 3.25. So that ratio is a minus 1.5386, and that's our tracking signal with a window of 4. Again, here's our equation, where the sum of the deviations is a numerator, and MAD, which is the mean absolute deviation, is our denominator. Since the numerator is the sum of the deviations, and the sum of the deviations is a measure of bias, the tracking signal is also a measure of bias but the tracking signal is a relative measure of bias. So let me illustrate the difference between a relative measure of bias and an absolute measure of bias with an example. For this time series, which is 26, 27, 19, 26, 30, the mean deviation is a minus 1.25, and the tracking signal is a minus 1.53846. But if the time series was 26 million, 27 million, 19 million, 26 million, 30 million, then the mean deviation would be a minus 1.25 million. 
but the tracking signal will still be minus 1.53846. So the magnitude of the time series will be reflected in the mean deviation value, but not the tracking signal. So the bias here is an absolute measure of bias, and the absolute measure is the absolute measure of the magnitude of the time series. But our tracking signal is a relative measure of bias, and that relative measure is the window. So the value of our tracking signal will range between plus or minus 4, which is our window. And that's the relative measure of bias. So now let's see how to calculate these values in Excel. So let's bring in Excel. I've already typed in time series, so let's do the moving average of the window of 3 equals average of our three time periods. And let's copy that down. So as I copy this down with the MA3, notice my forecast down here of 24. There's where we want to look at our forecast accuracy measures. Take our deviations, which is D minus F, and copy that down. And then take the absolute value, the absolute value of our deviations, ABS of our deviations. And then we'll copy that down. So now that we have our deviations and absolute value of our deviations, we only want the last four. Because remember, our window was four. So let's just erase these. And now let's bring our mean deviation mat and tracking signal down here. Because here's where we're going to start calculating these things. Let's move this up. So now we have a mean deviation, which is going to be the average of our deviations right here. I mean absolute deviation, which is the mean of our absolute values. And then finally our tracking signal, which is the sum of the deviations divided by the average of our absolute values, which is our MAD. And there's our tracking signal. So if I bring this up and I can compare this with what we had before, there's our mean deviation of minus 1.25. There's our MAD of 3.25. And there's our tracking signal of minus 1.53846. And that's how you calculate this with Excel. So let's see the application of the forecast accuracy measures in practice. Well, the tracking signal will be described as the significance of the bias, the mean deviation, the amount of bias, and the MAD, the amount of variability. So the amount of variability often is used to indicate the level of risk in your forecast. Well, in your time series, if your forecast had large variability around your time series, then that same variability would be expected in the future around your forecast. So that would indicate a level of risk. Well, the mean deviation is the amount of bias in your forecast. The tracking signal is the significance of that bias. Well, let me illustrate how these are used together with an example. Suppose I told you a forecast had a bias of $100. Is that $100 bias significant? Well, it depends on the time series. If the time series is in the 100s, like 120, 130, a bias of $100 would be significant. And then the magnitude of the tracking signal would be very close to the window. But if that time series was in the millions, like $250 million, that $100 bias would be insignificant. And our tracking signal for that time series would be very close to zero. And so the mean deviation tells you what the bias is, but the tracking signal is used to interpret that bias to see if that bias is significant. These are only three of many forecast accuracy measures. But these three measures illustrate very effectively how they can measure the accuracy of forecasts. That ends this video on forecast accuracy with Excel. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.